Welcome in. This is the NFL recap for week 10. Yes. We are brought you, to you. you. You didn't even have a note for that. Nope. That's a, once we get into these high numbers, like I never know exactly what the hell we're doing. <laughs> it's like we're on week 20-something. Like something. at this and point, it's like, God. College and fo- in the NFL are off by one, so that always messes me up. Yeah. Anyway, we're brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier gambling destination. You can go check them out at tunicatravels.com. And uh, we want to appreciate them for, for sponsoring the show. And uh, let's get into the recap. Let's do it. Let's do it. Because this is our show, and I get to the luxury of handling the NFL recap, we're going to start in Cleveland. We're going to start where I want to start. start <laughs> You're not going to start in Mexico no, City? We're not gonna, no, I guess no. We're going to preview that. <laughs> we're gonna, yeah, we're going to start We're gonna start in Cleveland. Baker Mayfield and the Ooh. Cleveland Browns took a – Decent. They're not one of the really good teams, but they're a decent team, a Falcons team, and they just whipped their butt. Yeah, who was the guy for the Falcons afterwards? I've got a sneeze in case anybody's wondering. <laughs> uh, I don't know what the hell happened there. The The guy for the Falcons that said, like he came out after the game and was like, you know, we kind of thought we were just going to show up and like it's the Browns, we'll figure it out. And That's like you a, cannot do that against well, against any NFL team. You can't team. do that in the NFL. This is the difference between NFL and college: is you can overlook Citadel and just moonwalk through them and beat them by thirty. Because well, there's a talent discrepancy. That's right. There is not that in the, the NFL. The other guys on the team on the other side of the field they get paid too. Oh, it like blows they might my not be mind. as good as you, but they work really hard at it. Baker Mayfield. This is this is my favorite thing about this game. There are two unbelievable offensive stats. That are important, and I guess they're not stats. One of them is a stat. It is Baker Mayfield had the same amount of touchdowns as he had his incompletions. That's three. That's remarkable. That's incredible. <laughs> that is, I mean, that's really, really good. And then the other one is I could give you numbers all day long, but it's just as simple as this. Nick Chubb is a grown ass man. He is a monster. If there ever was one, I wish you had the uh, the Spanish call of oh that my pulled gosh. up. I know. If if we like, if we had NFL rights to insert clips, just go go Google YouTube whatever the 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 Spanish uh, call for Nick Chubb's ninety two yard run. It's hasta amazing. La vista, baby. baby. Here's here's <laughs> the greatest thing about it. I need to learn Spanish just so I would rather watch the Spanish version of all these games. Because the American announcer, the American, the nor- like the announcers for all these NFL games, yeah. they're terrible. All these games oh, yeah. are terrible. But the Spanish version sounds so much more fun. That's my wife uh, majored in Spanish in college. Does she know a conversational like yeah, Spanish? She, knows, she can speak she knows, like she can listen to she's, that. No, now she's not like she will. She'll be able to understand like like seventy five percent of it. See, I need. I, she's I need not that quite in my life. like she's what? What are they bilingual? Yeah. She's not quite bilingual yet. But that. but she loves that language, all, all that. It's it's pretty crazy. So that was great. Defensively, they just gave Matt Ryan fits. They couldn't run the ball. They couldn't pass the ball. Uh, this it, is it the really most complete like, game I've I've seen out of the Browns. It looked in like, like three the three Falcons had no game plan. No, it, oh, it, it definitely looked like they had no game plan. I mean, it was it was crazy to watch because like they had been playing really well. That's which, right. by the way, makes me love the Falcons this week. But we'll we'll get to that. We'll, we'll get we'll to get that. to that later. We'll get to that. So, so Cleveland, big ups on them. We do a top five, bottom five. Hey, they are they are totally out of my bottom five now. And uh, very, <laughs> very excited for that. Um, good game. If I'm going to start in Cleveland with my team, I also have to go to my Patriots. And we got to talk about the Titans and the Pats game. Okay. Man, the Titans whipped the Pats at every level of the game. The first time since Brady's, what, first game? That the Patriots have been beaten by twenty four points. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. I mean, that's going back to what two thousand. There are th- they have Whew. three losses this year. All came on the road. All came to teams with losing records, and all of them are double digit losses. Yeah. And now is this a like? Eh, we don't really have to prep for them. No. Or I, I, is it because like two of them have been former Belichick guys? Well, you can't call Vrabel. Vrabel's a Belichick like player. Well, that's okay. what I, that, but look, coming I, from like the coaching when you tree, say a guy, like I'm not okay. specifying. I'm just saying it's a Belichick guy. But it's rare like, that does, we even have this option because players in the NFL just don't become coaches. It's not yeah, basketball. It's, it's not. It's, it's not, not baseball. Common. It's it just doesn't happen very often. Um, 
Well, that's why I'm it, like, does is is Bill I don't taking has, it easy no, on him? Or? God, no, no, he takes nothing easy on anybody. Um, I, I think. I mean, you got to admit it's weird. Well, I I can't I really can't explain it other than Tom looked this. I will tell you this. I can't speak for the first two games. We're talking about this one. Tom looked forty one years old. Oh, he he most certainly did. I mean, he looked like an old man trying to play football. You know, it felt with weird. a bunch of young guys, and that it felt that weird kind of watching the Titans sad. Um, because they like so they they try Edelman throws a pass to Brady. And I mean, it picks up yards. He actually catches yeah, it and all he that. He could have got the first down um, easy, but he's forty-one and his legs don't work. Yeah, it, he tripped all over himself and and whatever. Uh, and then the Titans come back later on and throw a pass to Mariota, and he like goes the very for like next twenty-five. Drive. Well, yeah, he like, threw it to a young, super athletic quarterback. Yeah, I know. Like, and that's it's, that's the difference. And then, of course, Deion Lewis is talking trash after the game. It's like. Yo, you dudes are five and four. I, Let's not go crazy. I, I will here. tell you this: if somehow the 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 Pats end up that three seed or the four seed, and they play on Wild Card Sunday, and they get a rematch of the Titans, just be real careful talking all this noise. Okay, it's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, just be careful. Now they they whipped their butt. They earned the W. This is so something from the Titans that I took away from it. A, we've seen the Titans defense three or four times this year just shut people down. Just say you're not gonna score. They but even it, in they, some of their losses. Yeah, yeah, even in some of the losses. No, they, the other thing, you're still not scoring. You're not coming in here. You're not scoring. Deion Lewis, uh, not Deion Lewis. Deion Lewis had a great game. Unbelievable game. Derrick Henry had a great game. Corey Davis is who I want to talk about. Oh, yeah. F- is this the breakout game for Corey Davis? This is the best game he's had in his career. Right? I still think the Eagles game was better. He made catches in this game. that I mean, Mariota overthrew him. It looked like he was throwing the ball away. And Corey Davis said, no, sir. And he jumped about three feet in the air. He stretched his arm out like another inch and a half and somehow pulled a ball down. And he did it yeah. multiple times. I mean, it, he's he's finally becoming the number four overall player. in his number number five. Five. Does yeah, that number five drafted? overall draft five. pick. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, like I think it was about time for him to do something. It's you know? been a while. Like, Titans the Titans fans have, have needed, been waiting. Yeah, they've needed a, a – not even like a good receiver, just a decent receiver that that Mariota can count on. If, if he can continue to play like this, he's great. I mean, he's elite level. He's got yeah. that type of skill. Can he do it week in and week? I don't know. All right, sh- he should do it week in and week out. Will he? That's going to be the question. That's well. I mean, he's still a young player. We'll see. We'll see. All right. After that, I got a little note. The next three games that we're going to talk about, I just have WTF written right next to it. <laughs> okay. All right. First, we'll go to Washington, Tampa Bay. Okay, we'll, <laughs> I we'll love start the stats on the on we'll this. start on the Tampa Bay side. Tampa Bay had five hundred and nine yards. They went over five hundred yards, three points. How do, how does that happen? Lots and lots of turnovers and missed field goals and I can't all that. I can't mathematically understand. How that happens? Did the field become two hundred yards in this game? Uh, you would think so. The team that they played only scored sixteen, but they had two hundred forty nine, two hundred ninety four, something like that yards. Like that, all right, that makes sense. Okay, you you had almost three hundred yards. Points, you, you had about three hundred. Yeah, that makes that's an like, NFL game. That's, that's how math works normally. You put five hundred yards up, you're scoring in the thirties. What was the man? I, I plugged my phone up over there. That's okay. Uh, I'm trying to because there were several like turnovers in the red zone. There was like one or two missed field goals. Like there was a, a turnover on downs. Dirk Cutter like, said before the game, "I took over play calling." Well, brother, I don't know that I'd tell a lot of people that. Yeah, I might. I'd, I'd have made sure my boss thought the other guy was still calling plays. Yeah, but yeah. you know what I do like? He took personal accountability. He said, "Look, this is on me." I took play calling away from, in the NFL, what is known to be a pretty good offensive mind. And I said, we've got to be better. And I took it away from him. Now, you get 500 yards. Like, you're and the other pretty team, good. And the other team scores 16 points. You think, man, they won that game. So, I don't know that the play calling is fault. The other weird stat, and I've heard this about six different places, so everybody listening to this has, might have already heard this already. The Redskins have played nine games. They're six and three. 
there hasn't been a single lead change in any game. Whoever scores first takes the lead and leads it wire to wire. Yeah, it's really I don't and I don't know what that says about them. I don't know what that means. It's weird. I mean, they're better than the teams that they're better than. And they're worse than the teams that they are worse than. And that's just oh, it. It's, it's This is the first time since 1991 that they have been in sole possession of the lead in the NFC East. Like, well, at this point in the season. We're, we're going to get to that. The next – one of the next WTF teams we'll get to. Let's just go ahead and move on to that. Okay. The Eagles-Cowboys. Can we have an honest conversation about maybe Carson Wentz isn't really that good at football? I think him coming back from the injury. It doesn't look like it's a knee problem. He's uh, moving well, no, around no, it, fine. Yeah, but I think he's like it. So these things are always mental, right? Like after you. I don't know. That I agree with that, but okay. Okay. So from what I've been told, it is a mental issue. All right. Right. Like you don't throw the way that you used to. You're always scared of being hurt. Like you can run around and all that, but, but your mechanics are different. Whoop. And he does look different. But I don't think it's so much him as that defense is not nearly as good as it was. And, you know, at, at least it, like the numbers may but, tell different. But there, there's only one really good defense in the NFL right now anyway. That's well, Chicago. Who? I mean, Chicago's good. No, they're, they're the only good defense in the NFL. At the, the Steelers would beg to differ right now. No, they've played a bunch of garbage teams that don't play offense. I mean, okay, we can talk trash about the Ravens now, but at the time... Offensively, the Ravens are not good. Yeah. Panthers... Panthers offensively are not good. They got one great guy, and he's easy. When you're one-dimensional okay. in the NFL, you get shut down. Okay. Congratulations. They shut down the, the, uh, the Falcons. Sucks. They held the, the Falcons to so 300 did, yards. So did Cleveland. That's Cleveland average has given up like 30-something points a game. I'm just saying. So like I, I'm throwing I, I, them out there. I think I think there's. I think the Vikings think they're good. They're not good. They're not good. No, they don't the, scare anybody. We all thought the Rams were going to be good at defense. They're not good at – they don't scare anybody. The Jags, we'll get to them. Um, <laughs> and 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 so I just don't – so I think the Eagles are actually pretty good defensively. I don't think there's anything wrong with them defensively. No, they're, no. There's they're not elite like, like they were last year. At some point in time, you got to be able to score. Yeah. They haven't scored. I mean, they've, they've scored over 20 points a game. We were trying to give Carson Wentz the MVP last year before he went down. Well, that's before he went down. I, what, I think it's the same thing with Derek Carr. What did I say last year the second the Super Bowl ended? What did I say? Uh, you would keep Nick Foles and trade Carson I would Wentz. trade Carson Wentz yeah. because you could have gotten two, maybe three first-round picks for Carson Wentz the Ooh. second the Super Bowl in it ended. What do you think you'd get for him now? You st- maybe, maybe, a, maybe get a one. Maybe, maybe a one, maybe probably more likely a two or three. Maybe a two and a three for the next year, something yeah. like that. He's at his highest value. Not that Foles is the the world beater either, but maybe not. Look, Foles didn't look a whole lot different than Wentz looks right now when he no. had the team for the first couple of weeks. You're right. You're right. And they just had a hell of a game plan against the Patriots. All right. Last WTF game. <laughs> the Bills and the Jets. Now, you kind of called this one. No, I definitely called. I think the – well, okay. Don't give me too much credit, all right? No one in the world thought the Bills would score 41 points. No, no, no. You, you, but I you definitely not thought that. the Jets are just as big of a dumpster fire as the Bills and should not have been a 7.5-point favorite when I took the Bills. It got up to 8.5 by game day. I don't understand who the hell thought the Jets were going to beat anybody that bad. Well, well, I'll say this because people thought that the Jets' defense – was going to score. If you look at like Buffalo's I, defense, I thought Buffalo's defense was going to score also. And guess what? They did. Yeah, Buffalo's defense is good because remember the Jets have blown out some teams. We talked about that last week. Like they they blew out Denver, they blew out the Lions, they blew out that you week know. that week one game against the Lions. I'm throwing away. Oh well, absolutely, I'm absolutely. But it, but still, it still happened, and people still look at it right. Um, so yeah, I mean, I can understand where people were coming from. The Jets are at home. You know, the Bills have been disgustingly bad <laughs> like you're awful. right but so have the jets but uh, but here's the difference though is the bills were bringing in a quarterback off the freaking couch you're, you, for the second time this year yeah for the second time this year they're and starting the, somebody who was not in the nfl at all before the season started or last year yeah and and by the way 
they did that the first time and they scored six points. That's right. That's right. And well, the Jets are supposed to have a good how how crazy is it? I mean, Matt Barkley looked good. I mean, he, he looked, looked really good. I mean, he, he looked pretty. He looked like a starting NFL quarterback. Matt, but Matt is Barkley. that like the Nick Mullins thing, or is that like you know? No, no. Do not besmirch the good name of Nick Mullins. We will. <laughs> we will get to Nicholas Mullins. We we will get there. We will get there. So those okay. are. I just those are games that I. I kind of okay. I called the Bills. I thought the Bills would win that game, and and I called that. I didn't call forty one point beatdown of the Jets. I, well, 14 of those points were defense. Uh, all right. So now you – I don't know. I'm, I'm bad at math. Take away – Say, uh, say two, two field goals and three touchdowns. So, anyway. 27. Um, So, let's move on. We'll get to the Jacksonville. I, I didn't have them in the WTF category. This was a uh, first game in uh, Blake Bortles' career. We had, what, like three passing touchdowns. This is something and no interceptions. This is something I found weird. The Jags have been this this defensive monster. They're a rough, tough team. Tom Coughlin teams are always tough. One thing I like in the NFL is tough football. Okay, okay. you don't have a lot of soft teams. The Jags just got pushed around and bullied by the Colts, who I think historically, for the past I don't know, fifteen decade, years, fifteen yeah. years. Have been one of the softest teams. Very in finesse, the NFL. very yeah, very finesse. much speed, precision. We're gonna beat you with schemes, but nobody's gonna bully you around. I'm gonna and tell you Frank this: Frank Reich has changed that offensive well, line no, quite not, a bit. No, no, the offensive line. The dude from from uh, Notre Dame. Oh, uh, uh, McGlinchey, or whatever his name is. His last name. Something, it was like something easier to say. I nah. just forgot it. I, that's sorry on me. Either way, that guy bullied this defensive line around like he threw oh, yeah. those guys down I mean, he pancaked everybody all day yeah. long and and it's it's shameful they need they need to just just stop pretending they're a good defense and they're going to try to be safe on offense because yeah. they're not a good defense they're they're not even close to being a good defense what are they now they're three and six yep who and 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 they it's a look, far cry from AFC champion they are level. bullying nobody no, no, they are—they are no, no longer. The Jags are uh, no longer bullying anybody. Ugly. The the next two games, we, we've got a really weird uh, uh, division race, though. I mean, you, you it, in the AFC South, you've got the Texans with six wins. They're six and three. Titans are five and four. Colts the are, Colts five are and four. four and. Colts are five and four. I no, 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 they're four and five. I thought them and the Titans had the same. No, the, the Colts and the Jags were both three and five. Well, I know week. they play each other this week. Oh yeah, yeah. So it's I mean they they could end up with the same record. Yeah, but. We'll see. But, yeah, it's, it's six wins, five wins, four wins, three wins. It's pretty awesome. That, that's, <laughs> it's a very right. cut and dry, like, it's top very, to bottom. Very weird. <laughs> the next two games I lumped together because I think these two games were, were just – I got the Saints, Bengals, and Steelers, Panthers games. One team just – Boat raced. Yeah, just annihilated <laughs> the other team from start to finish, <laughs> and it wasn't close. So, let's talk about the Steelers, your Steelers and the Panthers – in this game, I don't think the Panthers are a bad team. No, I, no, they they. I think they quit. I think the Steelers yeah, they ran into a three buzzsaw. touchdowns in less than three minutes, and they were like, "I'm out, done." Like this is obviously how this night's going to go. I ain't it's, worried about it. It's Thursday. I'll see you guys Monday. Yeah, I'm I'm taking it to the house. I I don't know that I take too much away from the the Panthers. Just like I'm not judging the Panthers in such a negative light from this butt whipping. No, I mean sometimes this stuff happens, and and I'm not gonna beat up the the Bengals either because I think the Saints are the best team in football. But well, and, and man, the Bengals didn't have AJ Green. This was a spot where I thought the Saints have been rolling in the NFL. You just don't run off seven, eight, nine wins in a row like the Saints have. I think if they're gonna get caught, they're gonna get caught this week against a tough, physically tough-minded Bengals team. Uh yeah, I was wrong. They did not. Alvin Kamara is the best the, running back in football. Drew Brees is the best quarterback playing right now. Oh yeah, and and this team is taking no prisoners at all. Did you see that the Bengals hired? Uh, God, hired your boy Hugh, Hugh Jackson, baby. The assistant. Let's go. <laughs> the assistant to the, assistant to the, assistant to the head to the, coach to the regional manager. Like what assistant. in the hell is going on in, in Cincinnati? 
the Dwight Schrute means. See, the from Cincy the owners have just made me. The so Cincinnati sorry. owners. This is what happens when you leave a coach in too long. And you know what he's going to do this week? What his what his special role is? An offensive minded, quote unquote, genius that couldn't get Cleveland's offense to average thirteen points a game. He's going to help the defense. <laughs> of course, he is. He's going to help the defense. <laughs> Man, that's a uh, okay. That's pretty, pretty spectacular, Huey. Anyway, well, I mean, he, he may get to play against uh, Lamar Jackson, so that's you know. We we'll see how we'll that see. goes. All right, next game up, the best game of the weekend, in my opinion. I got the Rams Seahawks. I thought this was, oh, was a, a really yeah. fun game. That was a fantastic. I game. hated to see Cooper Cup go down for the year because he's a pretty he's special fantastic. player. Yeah. That offense rolls. He's probably the fourth or fifth cog in that offense, so I don't know that it slows him down too much. But this was an awesome game. Fourth or fifth? I mean, who? Well, I mean, you got Gurley that's better, more important than him. I do think Brandon Cooks Cooks more important than him. Uh, I think um, what's his name? Robert Robert uh, Woods is more important than him. So I would say he's probably fourth. Probably fourth. And I might be wrong. There might be people that think he's more important than Woods, but I don't. It's irrelevant. He's out now. Um, I'm surprised by Seattle. Seattle has played remarkably better than I thought they would this season. You know, I I'm the same way. You remember I thought they would go eight and eight, well, and I, and they're still kind of on pace for eight and eight. Like, what are they now? Five and four? No, they might be. I, I think they're know. I think they're five and four right, right now. Um, but like four and five. Okay, so four. Either way, looking either way. looking around eight and eight, they play at the Packers this weekend. That's right. Uh, offense looks good. Defense obviously is having trouble with with some teams, uh, but the defense has looked a lot better. Like Griffin's pretty good. Like obviously you're not going to be able to stop the Rams. Like it, most most teams don't get to stop the Rams. I know um, it sounds weird holding holding the Rams to 36. Is not, I mean that's not too no, shabby. It's not, no, it's not terrible. Maybe putting 40 burgers up on people. Well, and and the Rams defense has just. Oh, th- that's what's shocking to me. Yeah. Seattle well, scored thirty. Inter- this is an offense that I did not respect at all. I love Russell Wilson. Hey, the running game unbelievable. looks outstanding right now. I came into the NFL this year, this season, thinking this offensive line is going to be garbage and they're not going to be able to run the football. And they got chaos at the running back. Just totally missed the boat wrong. Brian Schottenhammer is saying, we're going to run the football. And damn it, they're running the football. I, it's So you remember Schottenheimer was the coach that – more or less got Mark Rick fired from Georgia. Um, and then Pete Carroll picks him up, and, like, it works. And I don't know. Well, but it really hadn't worked the last couple of years. This year? This year it's working. I, I, uh, I, can't, I can't figure it out. I think They're Pete Carroll is, is smarter than we give him credit for. No, I mean, I think he gets a lot of credit for being one of the top coaches in the NFL. I don't know. Yeah, but, I mean, how often have you heard him over the last couple of years, though? I mean, it's a, he, he's also done some pretty dumb things. To, oh, he to definitely kind of, has to hurt his own legacy and credibility. He definitely has. The Rams defense, it's a legit problem. Yes, like like we looked uh, at other the top, teams have caught up to them before the season. I guess before this week and the Patriots got pasted, we we saw there was a top, there was a clear top four, but all four of those teams had the same problem. They all couldn't stop anybody, but they'd score a bunch. Yeah, I I wonder. Is that going to become a problem? And I'm actually really curious to watch the game, the Monday night game between them and and, and the Chiefs. It's the highest uh, total on a game in NFL history, and I don't think it's big enough. I think both. I don't these think te- it is. If, if both these teams don't hit forty, I'm going to be disappointed. That's. I mean, this, I, I just this think will be that's a real. complete replay of Chiefs Patriots. Yeah, I last think. last team with ball wins. Yeah, I mean that's just that's just the way it's going to be. Maybe one or two punts. If I told you the over, under, and punts were two and a half, would you take the over or, or stay under? I mean, that's lots, uh, very little in the NFL. I'd probably go under. That's that's really small in the NFL. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll tell you this. Like, I, I, I was debating taking the under when the game was in Mexico City because the elevation there is like 7,000 feet. It's like even higher than mile high. Teams have trouble in Denver for whatever reason, but I, but you got to remember but, that hurts both sides of the ball. I think that can make that's scoring what I'm that's, even more. No, I think I, I think teams <laughs> because you see teams like um, like the Chiefs and the Rams have both gone into Denver and had problems. So yeah, but that's just part of it. I mean, and I understand that's just part of it. But <clears> like <throat> I, I was thinking about taking the under because you can get winded easily. 
And I think that means those secondary guys can get winded just as easily. Well, yeah, but I mean, now, I mean, now dudes end up wide open. I'm, I'm, all I'm doing is giving you why my under okay. was okay. <laughs> like why I was thinking the under. But I the can't. fact that this game is in L.A. now, like they ought to be putting up fifty burgers on each other right now. <laughs> like, I think I think they should. So yeah, I'm excited to watch it. I'm I'm very curious to see can the Rams defense show up at all. I'm also curious to think. Will either one of these teams say we need to run the ball and slow this game down to keep the other guy off the field because we don't think we can stop him? Does either coach give an inch in that perspective, or they just say, balls to the wall, let's go? I think both coaches like like the whole let's go mentality. All right. I mean, we'll I'm, see. I'm curious. We'll, we'll see. We're just guessing here. Yeah. We're not the coaches. Last couple of points here. Bears lines, not a lot to take away from this game except for this. Mitch Trubisky looked really good again against a bad uh, so, team. So, so tell me, is is Trubisky good? I I think he's good. I don't think he's great. I think every he is time good. that I have like really sat down and like focused on watching him, he's kind of sucked. And then when I'm watching other games, and you just look at a box score, it's like, dang, man. Like, this dude is, is friggin' I, Tom Brady over here. I know this. Like, younger Tom Brady. <laughs> I, I know that he... I know that he's beating up bad teams, and the really good teams haven't done that. I mean, the Chiefs played a really bad team this week, and they didn't beat the hell out of them. No, you're right. You're right. But the other takeaway from this game is very simple. Khalil Mack is back, he's healthy, and you're all in big, big trouble. This is the only defense in the S- in, in in the SEC in 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 the NFL. <laughs> hey, they're that, they're comparable. That SEC every, NFL that every, it's the same thing. They're absolutely not. <laughs> that everybody that is just ridiculous. That everybody needs to worry about. This is the one defense that yeah. you got to say we got to be real careful here yeah. because this guy can put somebody out for the year. Yeah, absolutely. He is a monster, and he looked and he plays on fire. Whoa, healthy. Yeah. And and it was good. He plays on fire. Lastly, we'll get to the Monday night game. It's the last game we're going to talk about. Nicky Mullins. You're my hero. I know he lost. <laughs> I know he lost the game. But I think I think he looked really good. Yeah, he still looked good. I, I like watching Nick Mullins play football. The uh the interception. I think this is the uh, most fun t- like dude. At least the right first now. interception was was not his fault. No, and it was the I don't remember the second interception. He and he and he, and he handled him well. He he came back out. He yeah he protected the football at that last drive where he had to go down there. They had to get the 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 field goal. Um, he protected the ball. Smart, good throws. Ones that only his guy could make or nobody would make them. Uh, I, he's running this offense. You can give. Kyle Shanahan, all the credit in the world you want. I think he's playing well. Got a decent game out of Eli. Saquon Barkley looked great. Odell Beckham looked great. They yeah, won the 49ers the game. defense oh, no, they're did terrible. not help out. No, they are terrible. So, a couple of things that have nothing to do with this game at all, but we're going to talk about this team. I was thinking about this when I was watching this. The hard knocks always takes a team, and the, the two – the two caveats to not be picked for hard knocks is if you make the playoffs, you don't have to be on hard knocks. And if you change your head coach, you don't have to be on hard knocks. So I was trying to think of what teams are not going to change their head coach and are not going to make the playoffs. I think if I'm hard knocks, if I'm HBO right now, I'm setting up cameras in San Francisco. Okay, for, for what? For hard knocks next year. I know, but like started. for what? For you, what get Jimmy, you get Jimmy G. Who uh, is who handsome is the, the, and, yeah, and the, women the, want to watch yeah, him? The, the greatest, the greatest face on TV. You get Kyle Shanahan. You 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 get you get this young bunch that's built this really fun kind of team. Yeah, no, you're right. And, okay. and they're attacking football in a little bit of a different way. Um, I can't like because here's the thing: I don't know that any of the other teams are really interesting. No, like I'm not going to Jacksonville. No. You know, I mean that team is just not entertaining. Like that's, if that, that's a dumpster fire. If the defense was really good again, then maybe, and they were still losing games, maybe. But that that's just. I not. mean, if if the Falcons don't make the playoffs, see, I don't know that I'd go there. But maybe they do. I don't, I'm just trying to think of teams that are intriguing. I personally would think the 49ers are more intriguing than the Falcons or any of the other options for that matter. I mean, yeah. I, I think I think like if you're wanting more viewers. Maybe the Falcons. Why? 
because, because San I've, Francisco has such a small fan base and Falcons have such a massive fan base. Well, no, no, no I, I think that uh, that Southern teams have a more passionate following. I disagree with that. Not in the NFL. I mean, I, I could Not be wrong, but like now, it, also the HBO that stadium didn't exactly look, you know. Yeah, HBO doesn't need that. L- literally, they could they put the Browns on this past year. That's a good point. And they no, got you're right. massive you're right. numbers. So I mean, this is the NFL just carries the water for everything else in the world. That's true. I, I just thought this was a fun team. My second small takeaway, and then we'll get out of the preview or the the recap. I think I've just found the heir apparent to Tom Brady. Look. The if Pats. You're, the you're Pats not saying gave, months, right? The Pats gave <laughs> Jimmy G away for a sandwich because they have a really good relationship with John Lynch. They have a really good relationship with Kyle Shanahan. Okay. They, they those two coaching families, Belichick and 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 and, and his dad, knew each other, know each other. They work. With, there's a very professional courtesy there. They could have gotten a first round pick from him from multiple places, but said no. We okay. want him to go to a good place where he can grow and actually be coached. And and so 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 that I like that. I think it's time to say, look, when Tom's ready to roll, just throw us like a fifth or sixth round pick, and y'all can have Mullins. And Mullins takes over for the next fifteen years. <laughs> <laughs> Runs a dynasty. Nick Mullins, baby, remember that name. He's gonna do it. He's the man. Is that the end of our recap? That's the end of our recap. <laughs> I, I don't know why. I know he's played two bad teams. No, it's, I, I it's, love him. That's cool. I'm good with it. That's the end of the recap. <laughs> you got